وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Ramadan is just a few days away or maybe we can say a few moments away how can we as Muslims prepare ourselves to meet and to greet this great month in Al-Islam? Find out more on The Straight Path. Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight now my world is bright is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome to the straight path I am Fuad Muhammad well Ramadan is just a few days away it's the greatest month in the Muslim calendar how can we meet and greet Ramadan as we know it's a time for the Muslims to refuel themselves and at the, at the dawn of every Ramadan, the Sahabas, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they used to be happy and most of all, they used to be well prepared. To help us in the preparation for this Ramadan, we have with us Dr. Muhammad Saeed, a professor at Azhar. Welcome, Welcome. to the show, Doctor. Barakallah. We also have Dr. Mahmoud Hassan, a lecturer as well at Al Azhar, and of course, our dear friend Ismail Hawel. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum all the way from the UK. Uh, Sheikh, it seems that last Ramadan just happened yesterday. We're already meeting and greeting another Ramadan. How should we as Muslims prepare ourselves for this great month? You reminded us, subhanAllah, of a good and great friend. Um, where we touched upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very close to the sinful. Very, cro- very close to the worshipper, the unity of the Muslims, the tears that are shed out of the fear of Allah, the feet which are swollen, out of standing in the depths of the night, the hands which are raised, seeking the help, the prayers which are delayed, up to those points where the heavens are open for acceptance. It is a blessed month. The companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were asking Allah in their dua that they reach Ramadan. And they were asking Allah that He accepts Ramadan, the month where you will find the next of hundreds of thousands of people are emancipated from the hellfire awaiting for Laylatul Qadr. To prepare ourselves actually for Ramadan, it is number one, seeking the help and seeking isti'ana, the aid and guidance from Allah. Because there are a lot of people that they are deprived of this mercy. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that they are approaching Ramadan and they cannot up, uh, touch upon the real meaning of taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in that month. In my point of view, uh, the shortest way and closest way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be through sitting yourself humble seeking his help and also accountability and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a change in the sun and the moon a change in the years of the people so that they ponder over the signs of Allah and they receive those things with gratitude and with accountability Amr uh, ibn al-As was sitting on the 
subhanallah with the bed of his death and he turned his face to the wall so Abdullah asked him oh my dad look at us you remember when you did such and such with the messenger of Allah you remember such a day a great day that you did and this is very important when you find somebody approaching Allah in the last minutes of his life you give him glad tidings glad news and he said oh my son the, the best thing that I can prepare in this life is shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah I passed through three stages with the messenger of Allah the first stage that he was the most hated person in my life and the only wish that I had is to get him and to kill him had I died on the state I have been in the hellfire when Islam was thrown in my heart and the guidance touched upon myself I went to the messenger of Allah and told him stretch your hand to give you the allegiance and then I draw it back and the messenger of Allah said what what is the matter with you Amr and he said I need to make a condition I need my sins to be forgiven mm -hmm. and he said you do not know that all the best sins that an unbeliever did are forgiven and the hijrah the immigration for Allah wipes all the sins and the Hajj forsakes all the evil deeds that a person made and then he said had I died in that state I would be one of the people of the Jannah and later on a lot of problems happened in my life the conclusion here Amr ibn al-As was holding himself accountable when he is approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accountability rectifying your intention purifying your heart um, straightening your path straightening your life you are turning upside down subhanallah al ahnaf ibn qais was putting his finger closer to the uh, fire and says mm -hmm. feel ya ahnaf feel can you bear the hell fire of allah so this kind of accountability is one of the ways that a Muslim well when he condemns himself and he realizes his sins he will fall on his knees in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shedding the tears and telling him Allah I have no merchandise my merchandise I'm insolvent of everything but I only have in my heart your forgiveness this is Ramadan this is the place and this is the time as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned a place which is a multazam where the sins and the tuskabul abarat and the uh, prayers are accepted there is still a time and this is the month of Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon all the Muslims mm -hmm. and uh, free all of our necks from the hellfire in that month Ya Rabbi Ya Rabbi Well said Yash uh, yeah, Shaykh uh, Ismail mm coming from the UK how did you I mean as a, as, a, as a revert as well back to Islam what was the first impression you had greeting the month of Ramadan I mean uh, my first Ramadan was uh, it wasn't a spiritual experience it's just a case of becoming hungry and getting headaches and not really understanding what was the aim of the fast um, yes, we had a situation where we're much more happy and we meet together, we pray tarawih. But at the beginning, you're just following. Do you understand? But as the years has gone on now, you understand that Ramadan is a spiritual experience. Throughout the year, uh, you are busy with work and children. And how do you maintain your iman? How do you, um, you know, repent to your Lord? You understand now. As the Sheikh says, you become Muslim and your deeds are forgiven. So after those years, you carry on piling on the sins and you need your, your sins to be forgiven. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us this blessed month okay, where we can get our sins forgiven. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, for me Ramadan is a chance to get more spiritual. Okay, staying in the masjid more, reading the Quran. I mean, believe it or not, the society does change in Ramadan. Just in, in this period of time, it's amazing how the person who you see every day doesn't give you salam. But in Ramadan, 
He's giving you salam, he's smiling, he wants to give you a date. Mm-hmm. So alhamdulillah, this, this month is very, very special. And we all need this month to deal with the trials that we go through throughout the day, throughout the year. So alhamdulillah, inshallah, may Allah bless it, bless it for us all. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, doctor, from, for you being here in Egypt, I mean, how do the Muslims of Egypt, how do, how do they prepare themselves for this great month? Okay, uh, Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. When you talk about people's preparation for Ramadan, it varies. You could divide people to two groups. People who are spiritually ready and are going to make like a pledge or a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the winners. Other people, they prepare everything for Ramadan, but they prepare what? They fill the kitchen, fill the fridge, yes. and get all kinds of food dates, meats, all these things and this is the preparation of Ramadan but of course they are mistaken because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the preparation, what kind of preparation Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah what is a fa inna khayra zad taqwa make provision there is, no, there is no problem to do that but the best provision you can make is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. so the, the, this, the, that team or that group was going to make provision of taqwa of course they are the winners on the other side of course they are the losers but I don't know I think it could be one of the habits that maybe our countries Arab or Muslims always we link our religious occasions to food like Ramadan which is supposed to be a month mm. in which the stomach has to take a vacation people are exactly as if they are going to war to fight prepare everything eat a lot but this is of course mm. this is not the meaning of Ramadan because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about why should we fast it's just for piety for fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ramadan it is of course the, the most blessed month by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the uh, reports he said to paradise prepare yourself take all ornaments you have because my servants my worshippers are going to come to get rid of the sufferings of life to my mercy and to my blessings so this is this is Ramadan uh, people some people when Ramadan comes exactly as if they are going to receive a very very important guest, a guest from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others they pay no care, do not care if Ramadan even they are not aware that Ramadan is coming or Ramadan has come, just they fast and they break the fast and then no, Ramadan is nothing for them so yeah. mm-hmm. Doctor made a very interesting point there dividing the people into two groups and, and of course during this, these times all the shopping centers will be giving all the offers the, the media will be getting all the series prepared for Ramadan <laughs> I mean, it's something very big in the Middle East. Um, but, I mean, in Ramadan is a time when you invite guests. So how do you balance it out? How do you balance it out in terms of inviting your guests in Ramadan and, and having as well your time for ibadah? Because it's a very special time which only comes once a year. Uh, generosity is one of the greatest things that Islam encourages. And the Prophet wasallam was so generous. And he was seen so an extremely generous in two occasions on the top of them is when the revelation comes to his heart when Jibreel ascends to the Prophet mm-hmm. and it is said he is like al Mursala. the Prophet was so generous like the wind the wind is so generous for everybody everybody enjoys it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not prohibit eat, eating and drinking, there is there is no problem. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala coupled the people or expelled the people who waste to the shayateen, to the satans. Mm. So if we set a balance in our invitations and all of those things, and we need actually to concentrate on specific things, mm. like for example, this is the day of mercy. Yes, it is a day of gathering, but it also needs concentration. Yeah. It needs to take every single possible step that draws you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through fixing your relations with your kith and kin having gatherings, inviting, inviting people to their dinners and the Prophet sallam said in, in the promise the person who invites people for, for that, that Allah will reward him the same thing as he rewarded, uh, as he rewarded them fixing those relations, socializing with the people praying more 
uh, going to the Quran and concentrating on reading Quran and the Salaf, it is reported that they were concentrating mostly on the Quran and the Shafi'i uh, used actually to recite the Quran twice a day. And Malik, it is reported that he left all the books of Hadith, all the books of Fiqh, and he was mainly concentrating on the Quran. And he said, this is the month of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So we need to make a balance between our gatherings, our food habits, and also the spiritual gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering upon the Ummah. So we need to make this balance in the time and also in the effort. Yeah. Uh, Ismail, how do you find it in the West as well? Do you find the same two categories of people? And uh, as a Muslim from the West, how do you balance it out of uh, between preparing from the physical perspective, as the doctor was saying, mm -hmm. and preparing yourself spiritually to accept this gift mm -hmm. which Allah has sent to you? <coughs> I mean, um, living in the West is, is, a, is a battle as it is, and we all need of this month, we all need the month. No matter where, but especially in in the West, they need a way to purify their their souls, because especially with the evil being you know around them so much, and um, they really need to you know concentrate on this month and practicing worship and, and stuff like this. I mean, obviously, I, personally, being in Egypt, uh, I find uh, the month here is totally different from from the West. What are some of the differences you find? Um, just the people change. One obviously is the Quran. I find the people in Egypt, Mashallah, they love the Quran, and the Tarawih prayer here is beautiful. Many people are crying in the masjid, reduced to tears. Uh, the atmosphere is totally different from the West. I just believe it's the amount of evil in society, what it has, or the effect it has on the people. And it's something to do with their taqwa and their iman. It's two different worlds between the Muslim world. Uh, and the West in regards to how Ramadan is practiced and, and felt. What about how Ramadan is welcomed as well? I mean, Ramadan is just a few days away. Mm. I mean, for this time, what would Muslims be doing I mean, in the West? How I mean, do they prepare themselves? I, I mean, mean, you might find, if you live in a community where it's majority Muslims, um, they would have different type of foods and they'll be excited. You can feel something's going to happen. You know, everyone thinks, oh, when is the first of Ramadan going to be? the moon sighting, people discussing it. So if you're in an area where it's majority Muslim, you would feel some change. Particularly where I was living, you know, there wasn't a majority Muslim community. So it's just like a normal day, except amongst your family. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, unfortunately in the West, they are a bit miskeen uh, in regards <laughs> to the effects of Ramadan. But it's a very, very important month for them and they need it. Because living in the West is not easy from the point of Keeping your iman and increasing it. Maybe you're, you're, you're Muslim for how many years, but it's a case of increasing your iman, getting taqwa, improving on the, on the last year. You know, this is what we seek to do in, in, in this month. Okay. Um, uh, you're from Upper Egypt as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Ismail says that, that the Western people are a bit, he used the word oh, miskeen. I couldn't find another word. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. In terms of preparing for Ramadan, how do you find the people of your community? And what we're trying to, ex why we're, uh, I'm asking you this, is just to give the Muslims who are watching the program an idea of how your people, what are some of the things they would be doing during these, t these days in preparing for Ramadan? Yeah, you could see that, uh, for example, maybe in the streets, people are started to uh, hanging lanterns, okay? Mm. And That's a big a custom in, in Egypt. Yes, yeah. and they're making a kind of zina in their houses, and mosques, of course, they're cleaning the mosques, and if, if there is any problem or something like that with electricity or carpets or whatever, it must be uh, prepared and fixed. And uh, But these, are, again, these are just, uh, we are, what we need is we need the spiritual preparation yeah. for Ramadan. We're not looking for physical or mm. for food or for so whatever. Fine. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is paying great attention to hearts in the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, for example, in the beginning of Surah Al-Anfal, إِذَا ذُكْرَ اللَّهُ وَجَرَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ So their, their hearts will tremble. And uh, in, an, in an authentic hadith, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your looks or your bodies, but He is looking at your hearts. So before Ramadan comes, we need to make a kind of washing to our hearts. Mm -hmm. Be ready for receiving this blessed month. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and we need to have uh, also a schedule, mm. a proposed schedule that we can uh, present also to our respected viewers, mm. so we can help them, inshallah, to do more 
For example, that we have a commitment that we will make the five daily obligatory prayers at Masjid mm. as much as we can, or at least Fajr and Isha if the Masjid is far away from my place. Um, also, I stay after Fajr for a while, uh, ma making dhikr and dua mm. uh, until the sun rises because the Messenger وسلم, <laughs> promised us that a person who waits after Fajr until the sun rises, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises him of a Hajj and Umrah. Perfect, complete thing. You don't like to go and to take that tedious journey. Yeah. SubhanAllah, just of doing that, you can stay reading Quran and then pray two raka'at of al duha yeah. And then you can make between Asr and Maghrib prayer a time for reciting the Quran. You can actually practice, you can go to your work, and then you make a comment that you make taraweeh at the masjid as a minimum, actually to finish it, because the Messenger وسلم, also promised yes. us a person who stays up to the end until the Imam mm -hmm. actually uh, goes away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his sins, and then you dedicate also two rakats okay. when you go for Sh the supper. Shaykh, I want you to things. give us a checklist of all the things we need to do from now. What should be on our checklist to receive the month of Ramadan? But we'll take a short break. We're talking about preparation for Ramadan here on the straight path. Stay tuned. My world is bright. Islam is my sight. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching The Straight Path. Tonight's topic, of course, is preparing for Ramadan, which is just a few days away. And of course, if you have suggestions for us to prepare, uh, please write to us, straightpath at huda.tv. Just before the break, we're talking about some of the things we should be planning and some of the things we should be having in our checklist in order to prepare ourselves both mentally and physically and spiritually for this month. Sheikh, you are going through some, some things we should have in mind towards doing. What are some of the things we should have on a checklist? Should we write it down and take it? Okay, I should be praying to Raqqa after sunrise, something like this. Exactly, but subhanAllah, we need to concentrate on two points. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look actually and how much and how big the good deed is. Allah looks at how sincere you are in your deeds. لا يحقرن أحدكم من المعروف شيئا ولو أن يلقى أخاه بوجه طليق. Nobody should underestimate any good deed, even if smiling in the face of your brother. So we need to have a vision and a mission. Allah, you open the gate of Jannah. I'm one of your slaves. I need to take the owner. I will not leave your door until I'm forgiven. Then you are taking the first step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will bring His help and guidance through the way. A lot of good things that a person can do in his life. The best thing, as the Messenger sallam said, doing salah or prayers on time. The Prophet sallam said that. Treating the people with good manners. And this is one of the basic things in fasting. If somebody insults or if anybody have a trouble with you, leave him alone. The sin is forgiven and the hearts are pure to accept each other. I'm fasting. I'm abstaining from doing anything which is bad. Also, some of the points, giving good news, glad tidings, making somebody happy. One of the good things that a person can introduce in Ramadan, because the Messenger ﷺ talked about it, this one of the best deeds, that happiness 
that you mm. throw in the heart of a Muslim. Maintaining your relations with your kith and kin. Getting into the nawafil. Increase the credits that keeps you closer to Allah. Mm. You should prepare yourself through taraweeh, through nawafil, through uh, charity. Charity is one of the base, the best things. Inviting the people, feeling about the poor. Also praying in jama'ah. Also being mindful to our parents and to our relatives. And visiting them and calling them. And setting happiness in the hearts of the people. Mm. The checklist may include one emblem or one thing which is whatever pleases Allah. Hasten, compete, do not wait. If you are, if you intend to be the first one to reach Allah, be that person. Mm -hmm. You need to be very close to Allah and this is the best opportunity. The obligatory deeds, the obligatory things, leaving the haram, seeking Allah's forgiveness, doing the nawafil, and, 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 and making yourself a source of mercy for others. This is one of the basic things. And there are a lot of other checklists under those items. Mm. MashaAllah. Uh, Ismail, you had a question or a comment before the break? Yeah, I was just uh, speaking about, um, you know, uh, Ramadan is given to us in order to increase our taqwa. Yeah. So what are those things we need to do within Ramadan to increase our taqwa? Obviously it's the case we, we said about praying and fasting, but there are certain things we do, like we may go to the masjid for tarawih, but then on the other side we come out and we're speaking bad or, you know, um, we're listening to music. So the month is for us to increase our taqwa. Okay, how do we increase it and keep it high? Because there may be some things we may do, we're fasting, but then bad language, listening to music. Soon after so you break the fast. Yes. So how mm. do we ma maintain this taqwa? Yeah, and another, just a weird example is that as soon as uh, the fa the f they break the fast, some people who are the smokers, yes, they go and have smoking. a... Yeah. 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 This is Ramadan for them is just a habit. Mm -hmm. It's not something which impedes into their minds and mm -hmm. their hearts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a change. Mm -hmm. Because the ikhlas, the sincerity is not that heavy enough to penetrate into the heart. Mm. Increasing the iman and the taqwa may be included in the hadith of the Prophet He said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever, the Prophet ﷺ repeated it three times. Whoever fast Ramadan out of iman, out of faith and ihtisab, seeking reward from Allah, he will be, his sins will be forgiven. And he said, whoever prays, stands in the night for prayer in Ramadan, seeking Allah's uh, reward and out of faith and believing in Allah, he will be uh, his sins will be forgiven. And the same is said about Laylatul Qadr. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of Iman and Ihtisab? Iman means that you do that out of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of submitting your will to Allah through the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ihtisab, you are 100% sure that Allah is the one who will reward you mm -hmm. in this life and in the hereafter. Increasing the taqwa through increasing the a'mal al the acts of the heart. Mm. Brothers, there are some, sometimes some of the people, they think that acts of worship is just praying yeah, oh, and, so and so making salat dhikr yeah. and, and salah and all of those things. There are a lot of acts of the heart. Mm -hmm. Purifying yourself of envy, of hatred to the Muslims and to the others. Purifying your heart is one of the basic and requirements of Ramadan and attaining this taqwa. Mm -hmm. And planting ikhlas, sincerity, Sincerity means that you attain only the pleasure of Allah whenever and whatever and whatever you do in your life. Mm. Also increasing, pondering on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also understanding the lessons that Allah throws to you. And at the same time, caring about what is halal and what is haram. Mm. And sacrificing for the sake of Allah. When Abu Huraira was asked about the meaning of taqwa, and he said, have you seen a man walking on a land which is full of thorns what is he doing he said he is caring about the thorns and he's keeping himself away this is the same taqwa is you are it is concluded in one thing which is doing what allah asked you to do mm -hmm. 
and leaving what Allah prohibited you to do. Very simple formula. Yeah. It is so simple and, and very clear. Mm-hmm. Prohib- prohibitions and the lawful. Lawful and the lawful. In your life, in your talk, in your family, in your manners, in every single path that you seek in your life. Mm. Yeah. MashaAllah, well said, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud. People with bad habits. Yeah. Appro- Ramadan is approaching. What is your advice? How do they get rid of these bad habits? For example, the people who lie, the people who backbite, the people who smoke. It's something mm. that is very, very... I mean, these are habits that Muslims should not have at all. Mm. But approaching the month of Ramadan, what are some of the steps they should take in terms of uh, being away from these bad deeds? Yeah, first of all, I think they have to make something like a covenant, a pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I'm not going to do that bad thing again. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to backbite. I'm not going to... Because as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa warned us against, against these things, many people, Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes and they get nothing, mm-hmm. no reward, nothing at all. When one day he was going to deliver a speech, and before uh, getting to the pulpit, he said, I mean, three times. And then when he finished, the Sahab asked him, O oh, oh, Messenger of Allah, we heard you saying, I mean, three times. What was that? He said, Jibreel came to me before I delivered the speech. One of the three Amin's is that a person who witnessed Ramadan and his sins have not been forgiven. So Sahaba. let him be unhappy, let him be humiliated. So mm-hmm. if Ramadan comes and it goes and, and, and somebody still has got bad habits, so he hasn't got any benefit from, from so Ramadan. So it's a sign that your Ramadan is not accepted. Yes, that's correct. So yeah. Ramadan should be a new start, turn a new page, as they say. And from the first day before Ramadan comes, make something like a list. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do so and so. My time is completely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتَ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I only created human beings and jinn for my own worship. And there is a very important point we need to raise here. Mm-hmm. One of the people uh, classified the fasting itself into three categories. The first one is the fasting of the public, those mm-hmm. who abstain from food, drink, and so on. Yeah. Another thing, uh, the, the second category, is the fasting of the private, those who whose organs like hand, uh, tongue, stop from doing any bad mm-hmm. thing. The third one is the fasting of the private of the private, those whose hearts are busy with nothing but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Asha these are Allah. the meanings of yeah. fasting. So from now on, consider yourself, which group you are following. Are you going to practice fasting with the public, or of the private, or of the private of the private? Yeah. So this, this is Ramadan. Uh, uh, Malik ibn Dinar, he was one of the righteous, uh, our righteous ancestors. Mm. And uh, he spent over three months without eating meat. And he went to his people and said, and, and Malik ibn Dinar actually used to write the Mus'haf, take mm-hmm. a few dinars and just bring the bread and put it in the water and eat it. Mm-hmm. This is his meal. So he told his followers, you see, it is a fall three months and a three months and three months until it is a full year and I did not eat the meat. Meat is halal. Yeah. And it actually to clarify this point very clearly. <laughs> but he said, I'm still Malik ibn Dinar, was my whole body. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't lose my hand. Yeah. I didn't lose my eyes. Yeah. I'm still Malik ibn Dinar. It's type of training. Yeah. So we are telling the person who's smoking, Alhamdulillah, you spend eight hours at least, mm-hmm. or a part of the day without smoking. Mm-hmm. It didn't make a big difference only at the beginning. So you have to make... It's at the beginning, it's difficult. If fasting teaches us how to tame ourselves, because they can destroy us. Mm. It's like a wild horse that may throw you from the top of a mountain, and you need to tame this horse. Taming it how? Subhanallah, brothers. Uh, from my own experience, the happiest, the happiest meal that I had in my life is not the most expensive. The one that had meat or chicken or whatsoever. Yes. This is when I'm fasting. Mm. Subhanallah. When you deprive it of what it's li- it likes, you become happy. Mm. Yep. Subhanallah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When you yeah. keep yourself silent sometimes, when you talk, the wisdom comes. So when you deprive it of its evil instincts, evil desires, 
it it is it is, it becomes more perfect and sound. Mm. This is the meaning of th that's conveyed through fasting. You deprive it, not to destroy it. Mm. You deprive it of what it likes to tame it. To tame it. So. To tame it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, to control uh, it. Doctor, I want to ask you. Let's get into a more serious perspective before we go into the month of Ramadan. There will be certain individuals, and from my experience in the West as well, they will be thinking not to fast during the month of Ramadan. Based on some parents, they say that, you know, my kids are too young, although they pass the age of puberty. Um, they're studying, this will affect your studies. People are saying, you know, my job is so exhausting that I can't fast. So the month of Ramadan is coming and they're, they're thinking, should I fast or should I, should I, shouldn't fast? Should I not fast? I'm afraid, subhanAllah, that it is one of the insinuations of the shaitan. The shaitan comes to the heart of the believer through two ways. Mm -hmm. On the two extremes, sometimes a person may be traveling and he have an unbearable burden and he cannot bear fasting and he fasts. Yes. SubhanAllah, we remember on the, on the conquest of Mecca, when the people went with the Messenger وسلم, and he told them to break their fast. They were in the month of Ramadan actually, but they were traveling, they were extremely exhausted. Yes. So Prophet told them, break your fast. Some of the Sahaba followed and bro broke their fast and the others did not. The others who did not were healthy and were very strong and they set the tents and they prepared everything. So the Messenger وسلم, said, ذَهَبَ الْمُفْطِرُونَ بِالْأَجْرِ the people who broke their fast, they took the reward. Mm. I do not put this in the context of no. encouraging people. No, this is one of the extremes. And also we do not like to take the other extreme of seeking trivial and unmeaningful yeah, really. uh, reasons of breaking the fast. So the person is young and he reached the age of puberty, so he is able to fast and he, is, he can uh, uh, bear it. There is no problem. So it is a must. It's one of the basic corners or pillars of Islam and it's obligatory in every single Muslim, male or female, who is, uh, who is not sick and elderly or whatever, according to the excuses. Can I just say something? Um, I mean and it will not actually, you know, it will not affect the study because all the people yeah. experience it that when the stomach is empty, empty you, concentrate yeah. you concentrate more. more From yeah. my own experience, yeah. I actually... Yeah, <laughs> the best day that I can study is when you I'm know fasting. It's, it's sad. Ismail, can I just ask you to stick that point? Inshallah, we'll take your point just okay, after the break. No Stay tuned as we talk more about preparations for Ramadan on the straight path. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. There are four types of fasting only. The obligatory type is fasting Ramadan. Nothing else than Ramadan is obligatory. Allah Azza wa Jal has every night and every day of Ramadan some slaves among us that he would set free from hell. He would say, give them a declaration, these guys are out of hell. Whatever you do in Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal will multiply it for you. All good deeds in Ramadan will be multiplied. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching The Straight Path. Our topic tonight, of course, is preparing for Ramadan. And if you have any tips to share with the viewers and to share with us here in the studio, email us at straightpath at huda.tv. Ismail, you were making a point just before we yeah, went to the break. Yeah, you mentioned about those Muslims who try to avoid the fast, who are not looking forward to Ramadan, who want to, maybe they'll just go on holiday, I'm a traveler, they don't want Yeah, to make all the excuses as well. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, um, the, the point is they are losing out on the spiritual journey of Ramadan. 
Now, there are some people in, in this world who believe that uh, happiness comes through material things by buying and consuming. But we all know that uh, the most expensive things in life are the spiritual aspects where it be love and hope and reliance. And Ramadan is a spiritual experience and I don't understand how people want to avoid it. Obviously you have a section of, of, of the community that from fasting is just they're just getting hungry and they're thirsty and they're not considering the aspect of worship. They don't see it as worship. They're not their near is not co correct. They don't understand what they're supposed to be getting from Ramadan. So it's 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 sad to me that I can there are Muslims who well, you know, it's Ramadan's coming, I'm gonna travel or I've got to find an, an excuse not mm -hmm. to fast. It, it's really, really sad because they are missing out on, yeah. on a lot. Dr. They Mahmoud. are missing a very important thing in the hereafter to subhanAllah, yes. Yes. which is uh, is it the, sins again the great again? intensive heat of the sun on the day of the judgment. The sweat mm -hmm. is covering the hits and the mouths and the eyes of the people mm -hmm. and there is nothing to drink and nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. And those people who are fasting their thirst is quenched. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they are provided yeah. with handfuls <coughs> of water from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we need to retain this intention when we are fasting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. these people you're talking about yeah. as well that sees Ramadan as the fasting as a burden and a you're burden. saying and taking a, a vacation to get, get away from mm. it. Do you think these people, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, is, is, is they're not spiritually prepared they don't really understand what are the benefits of fasting and as the Sheikh said as well they don't really realize the punishment of the hereafter for leaving the fast yes they are quite far away from that and they, are, they do not pay any kind of attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order because he said that the fasting of Ramadan has been prescribed you are obliged mm -hmm. you have no alternative you accept it to be a Muslim it's a kind of a contract you made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, you, you accept it to be a Muslim okay then the first thing you have to pray to do the shahada and then to fast so one of the pillars of Islam without which a Muslim is not a real Muslim mm -hmm. and again before uh, Ramadan comes also fasting why should I fast is it yeah. just because some people they want to be slim mm. they want to lose weight I'm a vegetarian so it's okay to fast also to keep my stomach strong no these are not the purposes of fasting because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah so you may get piety you may get fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and back again to that point what's meant by taqwa Al Imam Ali radiallahu anhu wa may Allah be pleased with him when he made a clarification of taqwa he says it is a rida al-imanu to be content, satisfied with what you have got, even it is little, and then to act according to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then to be prepared for the day in which you are going to depart, the day of the departure. So these are the meanings of taqwa. So what's meant by Ramadan? Why should I fast? Is it, as, as uh, Brother Muhammad said, the most important thing of any deed you do is sincerity. Okay. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Az-Zumar, مُخْلِسِينَ and then in Surah al bayna also, مُخْلِسِينَ الْهُدِينَ The word ikhlas, sincerity, is repeated many times in the Quran. So when you fast, make sure, direct your intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not fasting because the most some health reasons, or because it is just a tradition, as, as, as you said, it's just a habit more yeah. than a worship. No, I have to ask myself one important question. Why should I ask? I fast. Some people say you have to share the poor. They're suffering because they do not find food. So that, that's one of the good meanings, but it is not the main significance of Ramadan. Yeah. And I need to add a word for them. Mm -hmm. For those brothers and sisters who are very dear to us, and uh, it is not that big deal, it's not that dif difficult. Mm -hmm. It's only at the beginning. The shaitan just tried to tame you. Yes. The shaitan tries to insinuate in your heart that it's so difficult, you are falling sick, mm. you are losing uh, concentration, you are not doing well at your home. <laughs> Millions of Muslims, they are fasting, subhanAllah, mm. and they are not suffering. Yes. Millions of kids, they are practicing fasting and there is no problem. Try, take the first step, we need to encourage yes. each other, subhanAllah, take the first step and try it.
Mm -hmm. One day and two days and three days and Allah will help you. Allah will give you the power mm -hmm. and the strength inshallah. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, uh, sorry to cut you but the, the point is that <coughs> if they want to get the benefit out of Ramadan, they have to have all of the aspects of Ramadan like the intention. Seeking mm -hmm. Allah's reward. It's not just a case of okay, I'm not gonna eat but I'm gonna as you know, smoke, you know, speak bad. They have to try and get the benefit and this, you know, exactly. That's out of Ramadan. yeah. That's why Subhanallah in the Hadith of the uh, the, the Qudsi Hadith, mm. al sawmu li. Mm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala oh, said that fasting Allah. is for me. Yeah. And there is a question here. Yes. Prayers are also for Allah's sake. Yeah. Yes. Uh, making zakah is for Allah's sake. Why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala particularly pick up fasting? Because yeah. mm -hmm. this is the main ibadah or act of worship, mm. where the manifestation of sincerity. Dedication yes. and devotion uh, is is very clear. Mm. Okay, I want to ask here a question. If you can shed some light on it as well, for the for the brothers and sisters who take fasting lightly, what is the seriousness in terms of punishment for the one who leaves the fast? It is one of the major sins that a person neglects one of the obligatory acts without a reasonable excuse and the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment is severe on the day of judgment and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if he fasts for the whole of his life not only for the whole of his life for the whole of days in this life from the very beginning from Adam up to the day of judgment he will not compensate one day that he missed from Ramadan. Subhanallah. Uh, I think also the, there is a tradition which the Prophet is saying that the one who uh, does not fast deliberately in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worse than the one who commits adultery is worse than the one who drinks wine. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. So, Sheikh, uh, we just have a few minutes again. Time is running out. Uh, if you can quickly clarify some of the people who are exempted from fasting. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uh, made his acts of worship or he when he uh, prescribed his acts of worship on his slaves and servants he did not make a burden in the religion and he did not make it difficult for them وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حرج. so Allah subhanahu wa not put a burden in practicing Islam that's why the scholars uh, Allah subhanahu wa that even mentioned in the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that there are specific categories of people who are exempted from fasting mm -hmm. like the elderly person who cannot bear fasting the sick either uh, the person who is suffering a chronic disease or a normal disease a person who is on a travel on a long travel and also the a person does not reach the age of puberty the woman who is nursing and the woman who is pregnant and it will affect her life uh, and these are some of the examples of the people who are exempted from fasting okay yeah. we have about two minutes remaining sheikh we know that i mean ramadan is just a few days away and of course, every Ramadan, the issue of moon sighting is, is debated on television, is debated within the mosque. What should we follow? Who should we follow? If you can just give us uh, an advice, what should we as Muslims do when, in terms of moon sighting? There is a controversy in the methodology. It's a controversy in the methodology. The scholars, some of the scholars that each country may have its own separate moon sighting. And it's like accepted for a group of scholars. And others said that it must be for all the Muslims. And this is the majority of the scholars' opinion. And this is the most accepted opinion. There is another difference also about whether to take the uh, accounts or what you call astronomical deductions and experiences mm, the or system. the calculation system or just to have a moon sighting the conclusion is very clear and easy do we like or do we need the unity of the Muslim Ummah mm. so simple very clear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said mm. fast when you sight the moon and break your fast when you sight the next moon of mm. Shawwal if you are perplexed, confused, cloudy, complete it 30. Therefore, 
if one single Muslim bear the testimony that he sighted the moon in a place and the whole group, all the Muslims who share a minute or a second with that mm. place must fast oh. to be united. Mm. We do not care. We do not worship the moon. Yeah. We do not worship the sun. They are just signs. The Prophet ﷺ said, Fast when you sight it. Mm. And this is the most accepted. Why would we not accept the astronomical cal cal calculations? No, we accept knowledge. But knowledge and science is actually accepted if it is decisive, if it is clear cut. But there are a lot of controversy. But when exactly we are able to sight the moon, when we are able exactly after how many hours of its birth and all mm. of that, it's a lot of things. So Simplicity. the conclusion is, citing the moon is the preferred opinion of the scholars of the Salaf, or the Prophet Sallallahu time and uh, afterwards. And this is one of the basic factors of uniting the Ummah of the Muslims. That's a very beautiful statement to end tonight's show. Mm -hmm. It's all about unity and especially for the month of Ramadan. Dr. Muhammad Saeed, thank you very much. Jazakallah mm -hmm. khairan for being with us. Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Hassan, it's a pleasure to have you. And of course, Ismail, our dear friend, it's always a pleasure for you to be no, on the straight no, path. No. We hope that tonight's show has helped you in preparing yourself for Ramadan. And of course, if you have any comments or any advice for us here in the studio, please write to us the straight path straight path sorry at huda.tv and an interesting website which can help you in preparing for this month is a website run by Sheikh Yusuf Estes it's www.ramadanreminders.com that's www.ramadanreminders.com well that wraps it up for tonight's straight path until next time I leave you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh After those long dark nights, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Now I found the light. After those long dark nights, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Now my Islam is my sight, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight, Islam is my sight.